We're at Kyle Field, College Station, Texas, home of the Texas Aggies. And today, the 90th meeting between the Longhorns and the Aggies. And here come the white-shirted horns into the stadium. Texas ranked second in the nation with a record of 10 successive wins this season opened impressively against Auburn over the last five games however it has been the defense that has carried this football team they have been ranked second all season Fred Akers is the head coach the Texas A&M Aggies their record is 5-4-1 and, and they're all decked out in new uniforms today wearing the burgundy trousers for the first time they opened with a surprising loss to California, then came back to win one, lost two. But as you can see, since Kevin Murray, the freshman quarterback, took over, they have only a three-point loss to the tough SMU Mustang. It's an old down-home family feud, a rivalry where they don't mind button heads and bloodying noses. And it should be fun to see this afternoon. Coach Frank Rose, let's talk about it. Texas, on the one hand, mature, experienced, a lot of seniors. Texas A&M, on the other hand, young, a lot of freshmen. Well, Texas' is the top 44 players has 22 seniors. The Aggies only have 10. And on the other side of the spectrum, the Aggies have 10 freshmen lined up. Five of them are going to start. And Texas doesn't have any in their top 44. So what do we anticipate from Texas? Hammer football, power football, and a low-risk type of plays that they have used most of the year. Something that they, and let their kicking game take advantage of it and uh, let the uh, defense really come to the front and make the play and we can expect from the Aggies passing that's their strongest point and I think the issue in doubt right now is uh, whether they can run the football the threat to run because it's proper to point out right now that uh, the, uh, the Texas has the best defense in America now when these two teams are moving from left to right here at Kyle Stadium which is open on that end of the field they're going to be working into a wind that's blowing 25 to 30 miles an hour now that means what goal line offense going that way very definitely two tight ends just what they would run in the goal line hoping to keep the clock running on the other hand when they get the ball going with the wind they'll open up and try to make the big play and get some points on the scoreboard both teams have very good kicking games now in the warm-ups with the win both place kickers were kicking the football close to 70 yards we could very well see a, a 70 yard field goal today the win will make that possible it's a it's a good one you can't count the Aggies out because I think with Murray they have improved steadily they certainly have and this is something that, that Jackie has done he's got the Aggie fans behind him and Murray has made a big difference in this ball club he's given them confidence the threat to win he He's a classic passer that has four or five speed, and when you have that in the ball game, you really have a threat. This is the home of the 12th man, and we'll see it when AM kicks off today at Kyle Field. The Aggies and the Horn, they're ready to go. The series record between these two old foes, dominated by the Texas Longhorns, first meeting in 1894. As I said, this is the home of the 12th man. The legend goes way back. But uh, Jackie Sherrill, when he came here, put a new emphasis on it as he took students out of the student body and made them into the kickoff coverage team. And here are the 12 men of today, or the 12th man, singularly. The original 12th man was a gentleman named E. King Gill. He was working upstairs as a spotter when the coach summoned him downstairs, Coach Dana Bible, and had him stand by just in case he was needed. He was not needed. But this 12th man, as you see, they're just out of the student body. 52 of them came out. They wound up with 40, and 12 of them, uh, uh, 11 of them cover the field. And uh, you'll see some whacking and cracking because they really get down, and they really take this to heart. It stirred up the entire student body. It's become something that uh, people are talking about all over this state. You can see that the kicker, Alan Smith, is the only scholarship player on the field right now. He hits it high, along with the win, and he kicks it completely off the field. So uh, with the strong leg of Alan Smith, he does not give this group a chance to make a tackle. Rob Morshell opens at quarterback. He is a junior, 185-pounder, good running back. Ronnie Robinson, who has alternated at fullback and tailback, 215. Terry Orr is back at fullback today at 225. He's a tough runner. Bill Boy Bryant, not that big, 5'10", 155, but very quick, a wide receiver. And Brent Duhon is the other wide receiver, and he is a good one at 5'11", 165 pounds. So here is the first snap of the ball game for the Texas Longhorns. They go into the wind. 71 degrees, the wind blowing between 25 and 30 miles an hour. 
First play of the ball game. Give it to Ronnie Robinson. And Robinson goes left with it. Gets one yard. It'll be second down and nine. The big guys up front. Bobby Micho, 6'4", 220, the tight end. Casey Smith at tackle, 260 pounds. Burke McJunkin at guard, 250 pounds. David Jones at center, 260 pounds. Adam Schreiber at guard, 250 pounds. And Gene Chilton at tackle, 280 pounds and just a sophomore. Second down at about nine for the Longhorns. Undefeated and ranked second in the nation against their old foe, Texas A&M. It goes again to Ronnie Robinson. And Robinson gets it up to about the 25 before he is brought down. He went toward the boundary, and the Texas A&M defensive people wouldn't get him or let him get around. Ray Childress at 6'6 is a horse in that defensive unit. Billy Cannon is another fellow on the outside linebacking position. Those two people fundamentally just have the privilege of playing football. No real specific assignments, particularly for Cannon. The secondary sets up there. It is young, but it's getting better all the time. And it's third down and five for Texas as Marshall on a quarterback sweep right is going to be caught behind the line of scrimmage and brought down. And so Texas now will have to kick into the wind. And uh, Childress, the big defensive end at 6'6", 270, makes the play. Frank, your microphone is apparently not working. Uh, here's John Telchik in now to punt, averaging just at 45 yards on the season. He's got to hit it into a 30-mile-an-hour wind. The barefoot kicker gets it out of there and turns it over. It's a beautiful kick under the conditions. Billy Cannon back for the fair catch call, a 42-yard punt into that wind, and that is spectacular. Kevin Murray is a freshman quarterback that's getting better and better. Keith Woodside is a freshman, a true freshman at tailback. Roger Vick is another true freshman at the fullback spot. As I said, a very young team. Shea Walker is a redshirt freshman at the split-in position. And Jimmy Williams, the wide receiver, is a senior. And Kevin Murray comes up now for his first snap. They are double wide to both sides of the field. And it's first down for the Aggies at their own 32. Murray back on the first play of the ball game. Throws the pass incomplete. He had number 88 coming across Jimmy Williams, and he threw the ball way behind him. Rich Seiler is the tight end, 6'2 and 240. Nate Stedman at tackle, 260. Matt Darwin at guard, 265. The center is Steve Schiller at 230. Ken Reeves is the other guard, 6'5 and 270. And Tommy Robinson, 6'4, 285. Boy, I tell you, they are big these days in college football. Second down and 10 for Texas A&M. First running play of the ball game is Roger Vick. The 190-pound fullback carries it, and he picks up about two and a half to three. The Texas defensive front, experienced Holly, a defensive end, been around a long time. Jeff Lighting has been around a long time, a senior. He leads the linebacking corps. It is obviously one of the better defensive teams in America. The defensive secondary will play you man. And I mean they will flat play you. Boy, they'll stick their helmet right on your number and just ride you like a horse. About as good a man secondary as you're going to see in college football. It is third down, call it eight for Texas A&M. Deep drop by Murray. His pass is complete, and it's good for a first down at the 49 to Shea Walker. Shea Walker, number 85, is their possession type passer. Sure hands, but watch the footwork and the classic passing technique that this young freshman just an incredible story starting after the fourth game of the season watch him follow through and drill the ball on a rope right to Walker for the first down at the Aggie 49 they're working with the wind so they're obviously going to try to get some points on the scoreboard and use the forward pass doing it here's the sweep 43 Vic carries the ball cuts it back inside goes down to the Aggie 46 and that is a five yard pickup on first down very critical that uh, Texas A&M be able to keep the threat of the run. The awesome Texas defense, it rushes the passes so effectively, pressures virtually every pass that the opposing team tries. It's important that they make some yards on that first down, and they did. Rod Bernstein comes in at the tailback spot. He's a little bigger than Woodside at 6'3", 215 pounds, also a freshman. Murray on the pass. It's good. Pass is caught by Bernstein. He is knocked out of bounds inside the 40. He's got another Texas A&M first down. Everything that uh, you want to do uh, offensively. 
Eric Holly, number 93, has tremendous athletic ability. He's been a starter at that left end for three years. Watch him take Robinson, who is an outstanding blocker, number 77, and just throw him to the ground and continue rushing. Murray on a roll right this time, getting some pressure, running for his life now. Gets his pass off. Is he caught? His receiver had fallen down, but uh, Murray saw Williams on the ground, threw it at him, and Williams caught the football. And the Yankees have another first down at the Longhorn 25. If you wanted to just say, what are you looking for in a quarterback? Six foot two, 190 pounds, that can run a four or five speed. Here's why speed is so important. He gets outside of containment. Holly was supposed to keep him contained. You can see the receiver is laying on the ground. Jimmy Williams, number 80. The ball is right there for the completion. Well, when you make plays like that early in the game, you've got to be looking over your shoulder. Here's the pitch. It goes to Woodside. Woodside to the boundary around the corner and out of bounds. And he hit the chalk at about the 21. Keith Woodside, number 32, is from the state of Louisiana. Jackie Sherrill shared with us yesterday that he called Tony Dorsett, who this young man had as his hero, and Tony called him and talked him into being an Aggie. Now, to go back, Jackie Sherrill recruited Tony Dorsett for the Pittsburgh team out of high school. It is second down, six from the 21 of Texas. Longhorn showing a six-man front to hand the ball off. Number 43 carries. That's Roger Vick, and Vick gets to the 21 and stops. The Texas defensive people will take your helmet off and cut your hair if you're not careful. The interesting thing about the Texas defense is that the front four are primarily responsible for pressure in the pass. If they can stop the run, so be it. The linebackers and safeties are trying to uh, play the running play and the halfbacks man for man. If we look at, at the uh, tackles there, Gray, the safety man, leads uh, the Longhorns. Very unusual. Third down and six from the 21. Both teams are very good place kickers and Murray back. Gets his pass off to the corner. It is incomplete. The pass receiver and the defender kind of got hooked up. Jimmy Williams and Fred Acorn look like they might have hooked their feet a little bit. That took the speed away from Williams, but I want to tell you, Fred Acorn is on him like a blanket and no flag. The, the officials have to judge whether this incidental bumping. You be the judge. Incidental bumping is not illegal. Now you can see that that wasn't quite incidental in my judgment. Yeah, but look where the ball is. The pass was not catchable. It was way over the receiver's head. That and may that have probably entered into it. Alan Smith now in for a 37-yard field goal try. And uh, from this distance, from every distance, he's been pretty good. Early in the first quarter is Alan Smith, the place kicker, a junior out of Texas City. If he makes this field goal from 37 yards, he will tie the season school record of 17, held by Tony Franklin. Bear puts it up. Real strong leg, and he's dead on it. And so with 10.06 to play in the first quarter, the Texas Aggies, in their first possession, move it downfield and come away with a three-point lead. Texas with the football at midfield. Texas defense. It's a special thing at Austin. I asked Fred Akers to define his philosophy. Well, we take a lot of pride in our defense, and I think everyone knows that uh, our program is built around defense. Uh, we want an attacking defense. We want to force people. We're not much of, for sitting back, bending but not breaking, and that kind of thing. We want to go after them. And Lordy mercy, they do. They surely do. 37% of the plates against Texas have been for a loss. The Aggies from midfield now. Kevin Murray pulling the trigger. Texas showing a six-man front right now. They play man secondary defense. Hand that football off. And breaking it over the right side is Roger Vick, number 43. He's from a little town called Tomball. You pass it on the way down to College Station driving from Houston. Here are the figures that we figured up of how many times the Texas defense has saddled the opposing team with a lost play. 37 percent. 193 of the 506 plays have been for a loss. That's some awesome defense. Vic picked up four yards, second down, six Aggies at the Longhorn 46. Aggies lead it three to nothing. First quarter of play. Murray pitches that ball back. And there's some blocking on the corner. And getting outside is Woodside. And he's got a first down as he goes to the 39 of Texas. Texas had the blitz coming on, trying to make something happen. Richard Peavy, number 42, was using the kamikaze at the bottom of your screen. Watch number 42 use the kamikaze charge, 
give up, try to force the ball carry inside. He does his job, but where's pursuit? Right there is the safety man, uh, Gray, but he misses the tackle as Woodside uses the stop and go on him and makes a nice game. Rod Bernstein comes in at tailback, replacing uh, Woodside now, giving him a chance to get a breath. Murray back on first down. Quick shot over the middle. The pass is good to the Texas 31 to Rich Siler, the tight end. Boy, is Rich Siler's story. Just a sophomore leads the Aggies in receiving with 35 catches. Uh, the opposing coaches told me that he is the key in this ball game. And you can see how open he is because the left halfback had gone out to catch a screen and it was an optional pass for Murray and he picked the right receiver. Pick up of eight yards on the play. Second down and two from the 31 of Texas for the Aggies. Texas jump. Matter of whether somebody moved on the Aggie front or whether the horns were trying to anticipate. And I'm afraid that Texas was playing the previous snap counts rather than watching the football. Percy Penn is the referee. Durenberger is your official. Wilson, the linesman. Roger Rogers, line judge. Bill Bagan, field judge. Larry Weeks, the back judge. And it's against the horn. It was a good call by Murray. Shows how much he is, understands the theory of Jackie Sherrill. Short yardage. Raise the snap count, lengthen the snap count. Defense jumps all side as we look at Jackie and the great coach that he is. Procedure, defense, first down. The umpire today is Marvin Durenberger. The umpire usually works back in the short secondary and the defensive side of the ball. And I'll tell you one thing, he better be alert and quick of feet because there are a lot of collisions going to happen in his territory today. Woodside is back in now at the running back spot. Woodside has the football. Pretty good blocking on the right side of the line. And they get it across to about the 24. To continue with the tradition of the Texas defense, I, I believe that the college coaching fraternity around the nation are talking about the Texas defense today as much as they were talking about Darrell Royal's wishbone in 1968. It's unique and it's different and it's outstanding. The penalty giving the Aggies their first down, so they're working now on second down and eight. The football at the Texas 24, and Murray looked like he was going to throw the ball, then hands it off to number 43, Roger Vick, and touchdown Aggies! Brilliant call, and they blocked it so well on the right side. Big pass and run, a play that can be used against Texas, but you see the block by the tight end was the key. Roger Vick, just a freshman from Brown High School, right here. He nearly juggled the ball right there, then he lost it. Keith, he barely got that back before he crossed the door. Alan Smith kicks it through, and uh, the Texas Aggies now have stunned Texas here in the first quarter with 6.39 to play and lead 10 to nothing. Now again, watch Vic bobble the football. I don't know if he was going to hold it up or over his head in his moment of joy or not. No, he starts bobbling it. It just kind of squirted out of his hands. And it was, oh, baby, come back to me. <laughs> Good hands to get it back, Keith. Oh, my goodness. 6.39 to play in the first quarter. And the Aggies are snorting at Powell Field. Um, I think the Longhorns and carrying the ball 45. That's John Walker. And John Walker, who is one of the swifter of the running backs for Texas, turned a pretty good play that time as he got around the corner to midfield. John is a 205 pound senior from Killeen. Once again, the Longhorns called a play to hurt the Aggies' enthusiasm and spirit. And spirit is a misdirection. Play started to the left. Go, went back to the right with Walker. Good block in a nice game. Second down, a yard and a half to keep it moving along for them. They trail by 10 nothing. And Morshell hands it off to the fullback, bounces off two people at the line of scrimmage, and uh, Terry Orr picks up the first down. Well, with Dawson, the outstanding offensive guard, and Ruth of the center in the ball game, the Texas offense has taken a little bit different look than it did in the first quarter. Two great blockers do make a difference in the middle of that line. Both of potential All-Americans. Mac Junkin has come back too. Kirk was hurt earlier. Ruther comes out now. David Jones goes back at center. And it's first down for Texas on the Aggie side of the field for the first time today. At the Texas A&M 47. 11 minutes to play in the first half. 
Pitch it back. That's a tailback Walker. And Walker gets around the corner to the 40. And turns in a fine run. Number 19 was the man that had a chance to make the play and simply didn't do it because of Walker's speed. Ken Ford, now you watch him. The strong safety has a shot at him, but Walker runs around him. But it's a good block by the Texas lineman. Walker has excellent speed for his size. He weighs 215. You can see that he gets that shoulder down, and number 21, Brown, makes the play along with Asbury. Second down and three for the Horns at the Aggie 40. Morshell still got it. And the Aggies have him, number 53, Childress. You're not going to keep that big horse out very long. You might get a couple of seconds, but you're just simply not going to hold him out of there four or five seconds. Childress has 13 sacks. I'm totally unfamiliar with a defensive tackle who can get 13 sacks, and he just fights his way right by Dawson, the All-American guard. He's 6'5", remember, or 6'6". He runs a 4'8 speed, and you can see how he puts it to use with an outstanding play that puts Texas in a hole. Losses all the way back to the Texas side of the field, the Horn 48. They've got to go down inside the 37 to get their first down. So they're looking at third down and 15 as Marshall. Running around looking for somebody to throw the ball to. Gets it down the field and... Uh, it's a good catch at the 31 and good for a first down. Brent Duhon. Number seven, Brent Duhon caught 89 passes in high school. This year, he's only caught eight less than one per game, but his average, believe it or not, is just under 30 yards a reception. As you see, a great move, and Brown, number 21, goes for the interception, and uh, Duhan comes down with both feet in bounds for the legal reception. 31-yard line of Texas A&M and a first down for the Longhorn. Texas A&M leading 10 to nothing, and it's Morshell keeping the ball. Good fake inside. He had a trailing back in perfect position, but the strong safety forward finally came up and made the tackle after a two-yard pickup. Keith, it's, it's impossible to estimate exactly the value of Dawson in that huddle. The senior, the All-American guard coming in and cheering his team on. I'm sure he has a powerful influence and effect on the rest of the blocking of that offensive line. They've missed him since his injury. They're Kelvin different. Epps, a junior from Dallas, has come in now, replacing Bill Boy Bryant at a wide receiver spot. They go double wide to the bottom of the picture, and it's second down and eight. And the sun pops out, right. Trying to set up a screen for the fullback, Terry Orr, and the ball was thrown over his head. Bryant is back in now for Texas. It is third down. Short eight from the 29 of Texas A&M. And I think the Longhorns might have they take time out. Yes. They were about to run uh, out of time on the 30-second clock, so they spend the time out with eight minutes and 40 seconds to play in the first half and A&M leading. He grew up. Texas with one timeout remaining. Earlier today, I asked Fred Akers, since he's ranked two and Nebraska's ranked one, if he'd like to see a national playoff. Yes, I would. I think uh, most people would like to. Uh, unfortunately, I just haven't seen anyone that's come close to having a, a workable plan. And for that reason, at this point, I'm not too thrilled about it. I think eventually we will. Eventually sometimes can be a long time. Well, that's the way it appears to me, Keith. The, the Bulls are in uh, power right now, and they've done a great service for college football, but the fans, I think, would like to see a playoff. Third down and eight. And Morshell back to throw. Goes down the middle. It's intercepted! It is picked off by Jeff Fuller, an inside linebacker, and Fuller going down the line. is caught by Morshell, the quarterback. There's a clip. There's a flag down, Keith, on the 40-yard line. Probably a clip. Had it not been for Morshell, I think Fuller and, and, and the clip, uh, he might have scored. Fuller is a six foot two, 210 pound inside linebacker. Not too big, perhaps, for playing that position, but you can see now why he's at that spot. Covers that short zone very well, and here's the call now from Percy Penn. Well, it's blocking below the waist, actually, for clear definition. 
Keith, let's look at that again and see what caused the interception. Number 19 at the bottom of the screen is the safety man, Ken Ford. He's got a blitz on. He comes untouched, and he gets the left arm and makes the pass go higher than, than uh, I guess, a little bit lower, really. And Locked Fuller the makes way. the interception and the makes right a fine it. run, but it's called back. Let's see if we can check who's setting up the blocks. Number 19. No, that's Ford. above the waist. That's illegal. Number 19 did make a great block. Marshall made a tremendous effort to prevent the touchdown. So instead of having it well on the Texas side, the Aggies have the ball at their own 31, but the point is they have the ball. Off Fuller's interception, and Murray now quickly wants to get it in the air. He ducks away from one, trying to outrun two, and he finally throws it away and throws it into the Texas A&M side of the field, and uh, I would think that's got to be grounding, isn't it? He, Keith, they're not going to call it, and the Texas people are really upset. There was not a eligible receiver anywhere around uh, where he threw the ball, but it's a smart play, an outstanding play by Murray, the quarterback. Jerry Gray, the free safety of Texas, just jumping up and down because he didn't. they didn't get a flag on it, but there wasn't anybody. The closest guy to the ball on Texas A&M side was Jackie Sherrill. What goes unnoticed is the ability that Murray showed right there to escape the rush. Texas had him in their grasp. It looked like it was a six sack for a loss, and he escaped and got rid of the ball and avoided the, the loss. Yeah, Tony DeGreat was the man who had a hand on it. Second down and 10 from the 31. Still 10-0, Aggie. And Murray back. Got a man wide open. First down to Rich Seiler, and Seiler all the way down to the Texas 45. Well, you, you don't think that Murray isn't going to make life miserable down here for the Southwest Conference? He identifies the coverage very quickly, and Curry, number five, runs off. When he saw style of block for a pass momentarily, Curry was supposed to cover him, number five. He took off the other way to help, and you can see the damage that he did to his team by not playing the proper responsibility. You can see how wide open he is. Curry, number five, plays on the tight end side, headed man for man, and ran off. Just short of the 45, first down Aggies, Texas side of the field. Seven minutes and 50 seconds to play, first half. Murray back, takes it once, puts it up. Wind's going to blow it down, but the pass is incomplete at the 30. The wind got under it and held it up. He didn't have a lot of spin on the ball, and Jeff Nelson almost pulled it down, scrapping with Mossy Cade. I think we should put the comparisons of the two football teams offensively. Texas attempted one pass going into the win. It was incomplete, ran the ball 10 times. The Aggies are mixing it up with Murray, their fine freshman quarterback, which is a phenomenal story in itself, throwing the ball at least 50% of the time going into this big win. You know who Murray looks to, reminds me of, Frank? Who is that? Turner Gill. Absolutely. That's Moving what I, it around the field and everything? That's exactly what I told uh, Cheryl yesterday. Looked like Turner Gill. Carrying the ball, it's Keith Woodside, young man from Vidalia, Louisiana, and he gets it down close to the 41. Oh, it'll be third down coming up for the Aggies. Nebraska, Oklahoma going at it later today. Of course, Nebraska ranked number one in the nation, and the Texas Longhorns ranked number two. And Dr. Tom Osborne is probably stressing the point that Nebraska should pay attention because Texas is losing here in the first half. And Nebraska's playing at Oklahoma. Here's Murray now. Gets his pass off. Pass is good to Vic. And Vic's got an Aggie first down at the 30. And there's Reveille enjoying the goings on. Well, the design of that particular pass was outstanding. Vic is going out and fake a block on the end. And uh, the linebacker thought he was not going out in the pattern. That was. June Davis covered him, and uh, he played the rush, and the receiver was open for a big game. Pretty good offensive game plan. Oh, I'll say it's right outstanding, here. Keith. It's outstanding. You should properly point that out. And the young freshman is pulling it off. That's what's really impressive. He's changing the play right now. Gives it to Vic. Line surge gives him uh, almost four yards on the carry. Six and a half minutes to go in the first half. And Texas A&M is moving into the wind, and Georgia Tech leading Georgia, and that is not a surprise. Georgia Tech just gives Georgia fits every year. Georgia normally in recent years has come on the second half to win the game, 
But Georgia is scheduled to play Texas in the Cotton Bowl. In those years, Keith, they had Herschel Walker, too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Quite a difference. Second down, full at seven. From the 27. Murray caught behind the line of scrimmage. Tony DeGreat, number 99, defensive tackle, junior out of Snyder, Texas, comes in to make the play. DeGreat has 20 tackles for losses this season. He has the perfect dimensions for a defensive tackle. 6'4", 270, and good speed. He's the painter, the artist. Well, he, good one. He can paint some headgears. <laughs> <He's laughs> oh, really boy. Good. He is a, he has just going to... He had greatness written all over him when he came on the Texas campus. Number 99. Look at it. Woo! Third down and 10. From the Texas 30. Here's the blitz. They fend it off well. The pass is incomplete. Actually, the man coming back to the ball, Jimmy Teal, had a chance at it because he had uh, Marcy Cade behind him, but he just simply couldn't hold it. And again, I'm impressed by the fact that the young freshman quarterback, sore wrist and all, threw such a hard spinning football into the wind. He had good side adjustment to the blitz, and he got rid of the ball quickly and into the wind, as Keith properly mentioned and pointed out. Alan Beautiful Smith throw. now a 46-yard field goal try into the wind. He did in practice. He certainly he kicked did. it this far. We will point that out. It would be a new school record for him. He got it up. He's got a lot of leg, and it's good. He kicked it 60 yards into the wind. So from the adrenaline factory at Texas A&M, the Aggies have gone out to a 13 to nothing lead. In penalties, Texas one flag for five, and the Aggies three now for 45, and of course two of them in succession here after the big run by Robinson, and uh, Texas has camped on the Aggie 38. 5.07 to go first half. They really need some points going with the win here in the second quarter. McIver is the quarterback. McIver gives that football to the tailback Robinson. Robinson is caught, dragged down, reached the 36, give him three or two. Jeff Payne, outside linebacker, 49, made the stop. Let's go back and talk about Rick McIver, the starting quarterback two years ago, 1981. Was beaten out after the Arkansas game and has played very little since. This year, he's three for 12, but one of those three passes completed was an 80-yard touchdown pass against Auburn. Second down, eight. Ball at the Aggie, 36. Double wide. McIver straight back. Gets it away. Got a man in the corner. Ball sailed away. You see, you say you're going with a win. Okay, that's fine. But when you throw the ball that far, and the intended receiver, Bryant, the wind, as the ball slows down in its rotation, will affect it, causing it to carry farther. Sail, and that's exactly what happened there. Bryant, number 80, had uh, put a good move on the man-for-man -man coverage of the Aggies and was open. McIver is a pure passer, pure drop-back, classic-style passer. Has had good practices. I talked to the, the Longhorn coaches, and they said if Rochelle couldn't do it, we would come in with McIver and try to throw the ball more. Third down and eight from the Aggie 36, and Rick back to throw it again. Rolls outside the contain, and he's going to get a first down. Goes out of bounds. Inside the 30 at the 26, Wayne Asbury came across to knock him out. He had that entire side of the field all to himself, so he just simply pulled it down and ran for the marker. The blitz is on, and you can see that McIver has better speed than I thought he had because when he dropped back and saw the blitz, he escaped to the outside. He saw he had enough room to make the first down. Good judgment on his part. He goes for the boundary. He sees the flag mark right there and makes it very critical and crucial for the Longhorns right there. Big play. Clock stops with four minutes and 13 seconds to play in the first half. AM leading 13 to nothing. First down at the Aggie 26. McIver hands it to Terry Orr, the fullback, bounces back inside, gets it to the 22. As we look at Freddie Akers, he's got his offense going. Why right now can Texas move the ball pretty good? In the first quarter, they couldn't. With the threat of the pass, the defense has to loosen up. And the Aggies knew that Texas was not going to throw in the first quarter, and they didn't, and they stopped them. Second down, seven from the 22. 
just outside the 22. Blitz. McIver hands it off. The play goes over the left side with Robinson carrying. And the junior out of Dallas gets it across the 20. So this is the deepest penetration of the day for the Longhorns. They will be looking at third down and about three. The Aggies, as we look at Jack and Cheryl, the Aggies do not have the depth on defense that Texas has. The starting defensive unit have been in there most of this, if not all of this ball game, and the Texas deep offensive line are having the upper hand at this time. Let's call it the 19 of A&M. 306 to play first half. McIver, put, put it out. out. Gets pressure, gets caught behind the line of scrimmage by Ray Childress, number 53. I wouldn't want to question the call, but a third and three with the momentum, two downs to make a first down. You've got to look at yourself and say, why did I do that with McIver, not known that much as a runner, always the chance to, to get tackled for a loss. Here's Jeff Ward, a walk-on freshman who came on and has been outstanding for Texas. He has kicked 12 consecutive field goals. This one is a 39-yard try out of the hold of Rob Morshell. Bad snap. Morshell picks it up, throws the ball. It is caught by Orr, the fullback. And Orr goes inside the 15 to the 12 and gets a first down on a broken play. Keith, that, I've said this before, and I've never seen it work. We coaches work on that play every, every, every day. When you get a bad snap, the holder picks it up and starts yelling, fire, fire. Then the receivers on both sides are supposed to release out and Horshell hits him right there. Beautiful execution. In all of my life, I've never seen it work. We practice it every day, and Texas practices it every day. Horshell, who started at quarterback, yielding to McIver, comes up with a big play. There's the pass to the corner. Touchdown, Bill Boy Bryant. And the horns are on the board. We saw McIver drill the ball from the left hash mark all the way into the corner of the end zone. Pure classic passer, Rick McIver. Not a bad bat, and Bryant's been open most of the day. They just haven't been able to get the ball to him. He beat Slayton on the play, and it's 13-6 now with 2.10 to go in the first half, and the point try by Ward. Again, a bad snap, but Morshell gets it down. And it is good to Ward now, 26 out of 26 on extra points. And it's a 13 to 7 ball game. Let's look at the touchdown. Watch McIver, who is about six foot four. Watch him set up in the pocket. He's a classic passer. Drill that ball, and that's got some muscle behind it. You can see that he hits the shoulder pads of Bryant. Now from the end zone, you're going to see the protection. That's the key with the blitz on. You, Brian is working man for man on Slayton, the number three, the cornerback. Very difficult with this much time to cover it. Now let's see what Brian does to get open. Number 80 should push down and just breaks it off. Slayton gives him way too much cushion with that close to the goal line and was beaten on the play from the very beginning. Boyd now will kick it off. There's Bill Boyd. Daddy played Bill Sr. and he didn't want to be known as Bill Jr. So he he wrote a letter when uh, he was making up his mind to go to Texas to Coach Akers and said, uh, "My name, sir, is Bill Boyd. Did you inform those who are putting out the publications?" More power to the young man. He can have a success. Wind blows the ball off the tee. Two minutes and ten seconds to play in the first half. And the Aggies leading 13 to 7. Going back to Bill Boyd Bryant, he's more of a possession type passer, doesn't have the blazing speed, but uh, runs beautiful routes. And he saw that Slayton gave him the cushion. He didn't make a fake, which was smart. He just went right out in the flat and caught the pass. No use to fake if you got him beat, Keith. Tony, that's right. Tony <laughs> Slayton is the deep man as Ward comes and kicks out of a hold. And that will go uh, beyond the end zone and off the field of play. 2-10 to go, and Texas A&M working from their own 20 as Murray checks off on the play, and they run it. And uh, there's a collision right at the line of scrimmage with Roger Vick carrying James McKinney, the defensive end, a sophomore from Austin, popped him. 
But Vic bounced on up the middle and picked up about three yards. Vic is the first Aggie back to rush for over 100 yards against Vic since the TCU game of 1981. Last week, he rushed for 117. Just a freshman. Call it second down at about seven. Murray again hands it off, and the gain is a yard for Vic. This time, McKinney got him. James missed him uh, on the previous play, but this time he got him. And Thank the clock shows 120 to go first half. I think we should point out that the Aggies may be the only team in America that with a freshman backfield, true freshman backfield, right out of high school. Murray, Vic, Woodside, Bern and Burnside, Bernstein are all freshmen. Very, very unusual. Third down and six from the 24. Let's see if they'll go ahead and put it up. They wanted to run a quarterback draw. Looked like. They and should Mark use Lang. that timeout right here. Yep. Mark Lang just didn't give him a chance. He was blitzing the strong side linebacker and the big senior from Ira Ann. I've been wanting to say that all day. <laughs> well, I recruited a, a player from Iran named Bud McFadden, who made all American. As we look at, and he went to Texas, by the way. I just recruited at him, you might say. Lang, number 53, the strong linebacker, a senior, steady player, had a great career. Texas calling the timeout, stopping the clock with 46 seconds to play in the first half. Yes. Texas will go to the punt now. Kyle Stewart standing back at his five. Deep man is Kelvin Epps for Texas. Stewart has kicked twice, 40 yards with the wind, 32 yards into the wind. I think that uh, Jackie is complaining about something. It must be the clock. Uh, the clock operator is down to the right, and uh, now Percy Penn, the referee, is going over to check and see if, in effect, the clock has malfunctioned in any way. Because it's very critical right here with Texas getting good field position, possibly, Absolutely. after putting into the wind, with McIver getting a little hot. Going back to the touchdown drive, the two penalties and the freak play on the... On the um, uh, field goal were most unusual. To, uh, well, the two penalties, though, I think yeah. were the most damaging because yes. Texas would have had the ball back on the 12, and uh, they just simply made two personal foul penalties. It gave Texas a chance. McIver came in, and Texas scored. What happens That's is... That's an earned run. You make that many <laughs> penalties. <laughs> That's right. What happens is that the, where you are on the field determines the offense that you can run. If Texas had had to snap the ball from the 10-yard line, they would have been very conservative. It had been a different style of play, but from the 25 and 30, they open up, and they pop a play to get another penalty. Now they're in four-down territory. They're worried and debating how much to run the clock back. That's what Cheryl wants anyway. Whether you'll get it or not, we'll have to he wait and see. He want it back. He wants it down. That's what, run it down is what I was trying <laughs> yeah. to say. Run it on down because obviously it was malfunctioning. Can't oh. be 11 seconds. I'll, I'll go 52. <laughs> Jackie said he'd go 52. I'm not sure what that means unless they, they. Look at this, Belinda, will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, me, I bet she does. Yeah, spending that kind of money, yeah, she that's ought right. to. That's exactly right. <laughs> Hey, Kelvin, don't let there, baby. The Aggie uh, team being summoned to the sideline, so while the discussion goes on over how much time ought to be showing on the clock. And what? Aggies with one timeout remaining in Texas now with none, and Kyle Stewart waiting to punt. Now they're over talking to Fred Akers, but if they're going to run that clock uh, down the short side, you know that old Fred's going to holler a little bit. But the clock has not moved so far. The scoreboard clock, that is. I, I would think that if that is the case, they will have to keep the time on the on the field. Be back, Judge. Let's see that. what Percy says. Five seconds. Five seconds. Well, they've agreed on five seconds. Now, is it backwards or forwards? I would think if Jackie Sherrill was complaining, he'd want 41. I would say there are five seconds to play in the half. That's the only thing I could interpret that. And yeah, it may be 51 seconds. All right, here's the kick out of there by Stewart, and it's a short kick, and here's Texas in very good field position now. 
as Michael Felt, the short man and the punt receiving team makes the fair catch only 26 yards into that wind and it is 46 seconds so they did add time I'm surprised that Jackie Sherrill said anything about it because uh, uh, it gives Texas that much more time the Texas are now out of their timeouts but they have a field goal kicker with a 20 mile an hour win if they don't score they'll have a chance to attempt the field goal Ward has hit from 52 this season but the touchdown is the big concern right now of Texas A&M as McIver whistles one good good for a first down at the 32 of Texas A&M caught by Bill Boy Bryant tremendous audible at the line by McIver saw the 101 coverage the best pass to throw against the blitz is right there you don't need protection you have open area and all you have to do is hit it Ball at the 31 of Texas A&M, 13 to 7. Aggies lead, 35 seconds to go. Another quick pop to the sidelines. Pass is complete to Brent Duhon. And Texas is now knocking on the door, trying to stick it in the end zone. First down at the Aggie 13. McIver throws this well ahead of the cut by Duhon, number seven. It, you can see that the Aggie defensive men are now gun a little bit, and they're playing way deep, way too much. They've got to get up and try to take them on. A lot of young people back there. Jeff Holly, a freshman, uh, Adam McKinney trying to cover on that play, and he's given him about an eight-yard cushion. Got burned. Ball just inside the 13. 31 seconds to play. Plenty of time. First down, Texas. McIver, faced out of the pocket, gets his pass away. Touchdown, Duhon! They'll call it a 12-yard touchdown pass. Rick McIver to Brent Duhon and a terrific catch by Duhon. Two things about that that stand out to me. One, the patience, the poise of McIver, and then the conversion of the route by Duhon, who was coming across the middle. When he saw McIver scramble to the right, he changed and converted his pattern, and then he makes a sensational catch. Ward for the extra point, and Texas takes the lead. So Texas A&M. Gets 10 points with the wind in the first quarter. Texas has come back with the wind in the second quarter for 14 points. Let's look at the touchdown. Poise, patience. McIver's a senior. He's been there. He's had a great attitude. His coaches told me, even though he hadn't played, but taken but 12 snaps this year, you see the poise. And the great thing there is the fact that Duhon makes a sensational catch, and uh, plus the fact that from the end zone, we'll watch McIver. He's rolling to the left. He's going to throw back, but then Duhon is covered right there. You can see Duhon number seven. Now the awareness of Duhon coming back with him, making the throw very easy, and a sensational catch for the go-ahead touchdown. Let's isolate on Duhon, and you, you can see what I'm talking about. Duhon's assignment is to come across the middle. He's not covered. He, he's covered, I mean, not open. So what does he do? As soon as the quarterback scrambles to the right, he breaks to the right and then makes a sensational catch and Texas is ahead. 14 to 13 and the kickoff with 24 seconds way back. Almost went down the tuba. You're talking about a change in momentum. Well the wind is is so fierce. Yes. That you're just not going to if you can't run the football going from left to right you're not going to do much with it I don't think. And, and Jackie Sherrill has got a pretty tough assignment to try to get his team backed up. They thought they were going out with a nice lead at halftime. Instead, they're trailing. But with a young quarterback like Murray, anything is possible. The scoring is going to be done mostly with the wins, but we said earlier. Well, they're going to kill the clock now and go to the locker room in a 14-13 ball game, looks like, as Murray takes the snap and just falls ahead behind his center and guards. And so we wind down the first half of play before what is very likely a record crowd at Kyle Field on the campus of Texas A&M. The 90th meeting between the Longhorns and the Aggies and the halftime score is Texas 14, Texas A&M 13. Texas ranked number two in the country and here is Fred Akers now with Tim Bryant. That wind in this ball game has been such a deciding factor. I've never seen it that much of a factor in one ball game. Well, it really is blowing hard, and I, I'm amazed that we were able to come back and go 
take the lead after the turnovers we've had. But I'll tell you this, there, there are 30 minutes in each half. We've got 30 more minutes of this stuff, just like it. And we're going to have to be ready. I'm really proud of what we're doing right now. Freddie, very quickly, let me ask you about when you changed your quarterbacks. What was the, the big factor, the major change? Well, we knew we needed to throw. Rick's our best passer, so we got him in there. Okay. Good luck second half. Thank right? you. Thank you. All right. So the halftime activities will continue right after this commercial message and a word from our local stations. I'm Coach Jackie Sherrill. Now, the best call of the first half was you winning the toss and taking the win and kicking to Texas. Now, what happened here in the second half? There's no question. They took the win <laughs> also, right. and it's, uh, it's a big factor. We're going to have to take the ball and move it against the win, which we did in the past against uh, Arkansas. We took the ball, moved it down, and able to score. But we're going to have to use the win to our advantage if we can do it. What is the condition of Billy Cannon? Will he be back? Billy won't be back. He uh, hurt his ankle, and he's not going to play. And it's, it's hurt us. It's hurt us with the speed on outside containment, being able to put pressure on the quarterback. Jackie, another big thing in that first half was the clock controversy. What happened? Well, they signaled him for timeout, and they said 11 seconds, but you know, there's just no way you could have 11 seconds, so they went back and put five seconds on the clock. It's been a whale of a football game. Good luck yeah. in the second half. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go back upstairs, Keith, and kick him off, and let's play. All right. Some of the highlights of the first half. Roger Vick on a fine fake making the Texas defensive secondary read pass by Kevin Murray got Vick outside and away he flew for 24 yards and a touchdown. The Texas backs were pursuing their receivers. Here's a play that teams practice. You've got to have something to do with that ball when you get a bad snap. Rochelle Hollis fire fire and his receivers the blockers on each side release out for the pass and it tackled thrown to or for the touchdown critical first down it first was, down and then it resulted in this touchdown well Bryant uh, recognizes immediately that the cornerback played him inside and deep and he just broke it off and was open for the touchdown it was the passer McIver who came on in the second half uh, to make things happen for the University of Texas Longhorns and this is the touchdown to Duhon a great catch that put Texas ahead 14 13 at halftime now to give you an idea of what the win means Texas against the win at 21 yards in the first quarter 168 yards in the second quarter as that kick goes way beyond a and M and without the win are going into the win at 48 yards and in the first quarter had 109 Eric Holly is the uh, defensive end for Texas Tony de great big guy 275 John Haynes 260 at tackle and the other defensive end is Ed Williams 240 the linebackers Mark Lane 240 Jeff lighting at 6 4 and 240 and June James at 6 3 and 225 and here's Texas A&M now operating from their own 20 first down Kevin Murray is the quarterback gives the ball to Roger Vick Vick trying to come around the corner and nothing doing as Marcy Cade the left cornerback knocks him down right at the line of scrimmage. There's the man that made the tackle a senior, 190 pounds. Fred Acorn is the other corner at 175 pounds, 5'10. <clears throat> Craig Curry, strong safety, six footer, 190. And Jerry Gray, 6'1, 190, the free safety. Second down and 10 for Texas AM, and Murray now going to throw it, and it is incomplete. The pass intended for Jimmy Williams, number eight. So he's trying to roll it left and throw into the wind, and he couldn't pull it down. That's the offensive unit as they start the second half of play. The same group that started the ball game. And the offensive front, I would imagine, would remain the same. The only injury of note for AM has been the loss of, of Cannon, the outside linebacker, Billy Cannon. There are the stats. They're pretty well evened out since they swapped win. Texas having the win in the third quarter. Aggies will have it in the fourth. So Aggies are going to have to play some defense and move the football. There's a penalty flag thrown as Murray gets his pass off and throws it into the crowd, avoiding the loss. But the referee threw a flag behind the offensive backfield. Motion, Keith, about on the quarterback and center. Percy Penn is the referee. I would imagine Texas will decline it and uh, force Texas A&M now to go to fourth down and punt into the wind. And Texas is uh, almost sure to have very good field position for their first offensive possession to start the second half. Fourth down. That's Al Stewart punting three times, uh, 40, 32, and 26. Well, that'll tell you something about playing football into a 30 mile an hour win in practice the coaches will not let him kick with the wind when this this strong in practice they kick against the wind so they'll be ready for it in a ball game low snap Blocked. 
And it's a touchdown. Nope, not a touchdown. One yard line. Chris Gulliman. Chris Gulliman blocked it. And Texas has it at the Aggie one. Here it is again. You can see that uh, somebody comes right up the middle and gets his hands. Dulliman. Uh, yes. And Dulliman. now it's going to be covered by William Harris. He tried to squeeze it across the goal line, but uh, they mark Harris down at the one, and that's where Texas has the ball. Stewart was trying to kick the ball low into the wind, and he hit it very low. And the Texas man, here's the man who blocked it. Big play for Texas, something that uh, they didn't really anticipate, but they will certainly take it. Out of the power eye now as Morshell is in at quarterback. Gives the ball, and it looked like Robinson over the nope Walker over the top for the touchdown. If we would now see whether they will go for two. I would. Uh, no, I guess. Yeah, no, that go for one. Thirty-eight. I believe I'd go for one. Well, the Longhorns make a break for themselves when you're trying to kick the ball low, punt the ball low, you want a low drop. And Kyle Stewart, trying to affect that, had it blocked by Dulliman. Texas, one play from the one, Walker over the top, touchdown. It's now 20 to 13, and Ward for the extra point makes it 21 to 13, Texas. And so the Longhorns showing you why they're ranked number two and undefeated. Well, the Longhorns have come back and scored 21 straight points. Now the Aggies got out in front. 13 to nothing, and uh, they're a young, inexperienced football team, and Texas poised. Uh, they are experienced. They came back and kept uh, winning away at that lead, and they've now gone ahead by eight points. Now the Aggies going in to win and got a tough assignment. Jackie Sherrill's got to call them up and say, Men, we're going to stick to our same game plan. We're going to do what we did in the first quarter when we were successful and try to get their confidence back. But with a young team, it's very difficult to remember that the starting backfield for the Aggies were all freshmen played in high school last year. The two running backs and the quarterback. Texas experience beginning to show in this second and third quarter. If you look at the touchdown drive of one yard after the block kick. The kickers with the wind have allowed no return so far today. There won't be one here either. You'd have to go over in the quadrangle to catch some of these the way they're kicking them. Keith, I think we should mention that the Aggies in their first possession went to the air twice. They were incomplete on both of them, which shows uh, what respect they have for the Texas defense. If you don't mix it up, have some passing, the threat of run and pass, then you're in trouble. They will eat you alive. Here's the score by quarters. You can see that came back uh, 21 unanswered points. They've got Nelson and Teal and Siler's out of the ball game, the tight end. So they're going with double wide people and they throw it short. And it's a five yard, six yard pickup to about the 26. Now they're going to mark him uh, at the 26. It was John Kellen, number 83, the tight end, just dragging across the middle. And they do mark him at the 25. Now, Texas going into this win did not make a first down in the first quarter. Not one. The Aggies need to make one or two or three to keep the clock running and not be any more than eight points behind when they get the win for the fourth quarter. Run it. Fumble it. And Texas recovers it, I think. Ball seemed to squirt away. Texas man had his hand on it, but the Aggie shirts got there in a hurry, and let's see about it. It is going to be a Texas ball. Number three, Mossy Cade comes out with it. Roger Fick couldn't control it. He was hit on the elbow as he came around the corner. Jeff Lighting, the middle linebacker, hits him, and Mossy Cade covers it. The coaches tell him that Jeff Lighting wants to see how hard he can hit after he has run for six yards, and you see right there, he just... Got his hand in there and knocked the ball out. Key number three, certainly seems to fall over. Long on, have another break. Texas making their breaks here. That's what we call a contact fumble. The ball was knocked loose by the tackle of lighting the middle linebacker. They go to work from the Aggie 34. They stick in the end zone in this possession, and Texas A&M's in trouble. Rick McIver's your quarterback. 
And he pitched it. Penalty flag thrown. It's Ronnie Robinson carrying the ball, and the referee threw the flag. Motion. The Aggie defense, Childress, who's played very well, 6'6", 270. Guthrie, 6'3", 270, played well. Sadler, 6'3", 235. Outside backer is 6'2", 220. Jeff Payne, Greg Berry inside, 6'1", 220. Gary Bullock, 6'1", 235. And Billy Cannon out with Daryl Smith in there. Now, Cannon hurt an ankle and is not playing. Daryl Smith, 6'2", 205. Penalty brings the ball back to the 39 of Texas A&M, first and 15. Dawson in at guard, replacing Schreiber for the Longhorn. That's Robinson, big hole right side behind Dawson. And he runs it inside the 30, and they get him around the 28. Billy Brown, a cornerback, 5'7", 165, a senior. Tony Slayton, the other corner, 5'11", 195, sophomore. Ken Ford, 6'3", 185, a junior. Wayne Asbury, 5'9", 185, a sophomore. Texas offensive unit there. The Longhorns have the football. Second down. It is four to go. And it's at the Texas A&M 28-yard line. 12.44 to go in the third quarter. And Texas leading 21-13. A block punt to start the second half. Big hit there by 53 Childress on Robinson. And he got him just about the line of scrimmage. They'll mark him ahead for one yard. Childress, number 53, can be the dominant football player for any football team. 6'6", 270 pounds, very active, 13 sacks for the season. Let's see how he makes this play. Controls Chilton, number 74, shucks him aside. With quickness, goes out and makes the play. It's third down and about three and a half for Texas. Big defensive series for AM. and McIver's pass, good. And out of bounds, inside the 15. Tony Slayton playing off Brent Duhon, and the ball was thrown as Duhon made his cut, and he made the catch. Ideally, the defensive back wants to play up very tight because he doesn't have any depth to defend. You can see the back is Clint Slayton is not even in the picture. The ball is thrown well ahead of Duhon's cut, and he, Duhon makes a nice turnaround and uh, catches the ball for the first down. They can pick them to death if they don't come up and start yes. playing a little tighter. You've got to play tight. You've got to get up right on them in this part of the field. First down at the 14 of Texas A&M. They give it to Terry Orr, the fullback, and they've stacked him. Excessive turnovers is the thing that all coaches worry about. The Aggies have had a block kick and a turnover in this beginning moments of the third quarter when they're going against the win. Really put them in the hole. McIver's hit five passes in a row. He's five out of six for 69 since he came on in relief of Morshell. You'll probably see Morshell back, though, in the fourth quarter. Second down, eight. Robinson almost dropped the football. He had to hitch to get it. And uh, the Aggies get him, uh, Tony Slayton and Greg Berry. And they've got him behind the line of scrimmage back around the 15. Once again, the Longhorns ran right over Childress, their great defensive tackle, and Childress stacked the blockers up, and the play was not effective. As we look at the Georgia-Georgia Tech game, they've got one going, Keith, 14 yep. to 14. It's third down and 10 for Texas now on the Texas A&M 14-yard line. McIver back, loops it toward the corner, and he throws it too far. Duhon was out there, and that time he had double coverage. And it brings up a fourth down and brings Jeff Ward into the ball game. Well, let's watch it again. You can see Duhon, as Keith had pointed out, we've got one, one defensive back running with him. You're going to see the second defensive back coming in the picture. The ball was overthrown and out of reach of any of the players. 31-yard field goals, right? He was out there to try one earlier. <clears throat> The snap was bad, got away, and they wound up with a pass completion for a critical first down. They got him the first touchdown. Snap is good this time, and the kick is away, and good. So he's kicked 13 consecutive field goals, and at 10 minutes and 38 seconds to play in the third quarter, the Longhorns of Texas are out to a 24-13 lead. Texas. 
Rick McIver, who has stepped into the breach on this windy afternoon and become the star for Texas so far in this ball game. And as long as he's got the wind at his back, I expect he'll stay there. 24-13, a block punt, touchdown. Fumble recovered by Texas, touchdown. Or rather, field goal, and that's where they are. They got two touchdowns in the second quarter of play after A&M had moved out to a 13 to nothing lead. Now, Texas A&M, in their last four possessions, they've punted, they've had the halftime, and they've had a block punt, and they've had a fumble. So things are not going well right now for the Aggies, and Slayton backs up, watches this one go beyond the end line, and Texas A&M will go again at the 20-yard uh, line. Jimmy Hawkins and Roger Vick are the running backs, and here's Hawkins looking to throw the football. He's in some trouble now, and he's looking for some help. He gets some help and gets back to the 20, and all of that running around, and he gained nothing. Jeff Lighting finally ran him down. The play call from the huddle was a running pass with Hawkins number 40. He's thrown the ball once this year. Uh, Texas was not fooled on the play. And uh, Hawkins had to just scramble and get back to the line of scrimmage. He, he could have thrown the ball to Woodside. He had a chance to pick up some yardage with that. But by that time, he started running back the other way, and he didn't want to risk it. Oh, it's second down and 10. This is Woodside. And he's got four yards. Woodside. Nine minutes and 40 seconds to play in the third quarter. Texas A&M will work with the wind in the final quarter. But right now, they're behind by 11 points. You get the feeling when you play Texas, when you when they get the other opposing team into a long yardage situation, they lick their chops. The front four are going to come on the snap of the ball and try to pressure the quarterback. That's the makings and the mark of a great defense. The Aggies have not converted on third down in their last seven tries. Murray. Felt it. Just clobbered by June James. James ran right over Roger Vick and nailed Murray. You from the left bottom of your screen, you're going to see number 62. James is going to come blitzing, but it's a delayed blitz. The tackle moves out to pick up the end, Holly, and James comes clean, clear. As Murray was looking down the field, he did not get the feel of James coming that quickly. And so from the 16, they punt. Stewart gets a snap. Last time they blocked it. This time he gets it out, but he just can't get anything on it. And it, on top of that, takes a Texas bounce. And so the Longhorns will set up with eight and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. First down at the Texas A&M 34. It was only a 16-yard punt. Um. That'll give you an idea of this 30-mile-an-hour Whistler that's coming right through the stadium. Keith, I think if you ask the, most of the coaches in the country that would tell you that would prefer playing in the rain than a win like this. The ball is on the 33 of Texas A&M. First down for the Longhorns. The double wide to the bottom of the picture. McIver, the quarterback, rides it off to the fullback, keeps it, throws it down the middle deep. Wide open, touchdown, Kelvin Epps. Longhorns are blowing them apart here in the third quarter as Epps catches a 33-yard pass from McIver and bounces the lead out to 17 points. The extra point try coming up by Ward. It wasn't a very good snap either, but uh, Morshell got it down for Ward, and the kick is good. And so eight minutes and 28 seconds to play in the third quarter, and it's now Texas 31 and Texas A&M 13. What set this pass up is the fake to the fullback, the option play. The safety man came up very quickly to support, and then you're going to see how wide open Epps, number 40, is. He is what we would say out early for practice. No one else on the field. A&M definitely blew the defense. They 
they had something from the scouting report because the safety man, let's see if we can pick up the safety man, Ashbury, coming up to support the option play. He is the uh, third leading tackler. Yes, you can see it. Now he turns and runs back. Number 16, and he goes over to pick up the tight end. Forgets that he's got middle responsibility. And F number 40, F number 40 is wide open for the touchdown. Boy, they have come out thunderous here in the third quarter. It was 13-7 at 14-13. Uh, Texas A&M had a 13-0 lead. Then they get a... The Longhorns go ahead 14-13, but they have uh, blocked a punt, recovered a fumble, forced uh, a short kick. Aggies having trouble doing anything with the football here in the third quarter, and they're going to have to start to play. There's a face mask. That's a face mask. That'll get them up to about the 20-yard line or so. Tony Slayton couldn't get a handle on the floating ball as it came down. And when Texas made the tackle, they grabbed him by the face mask and jerked him down. And just depend on how much of a penalty they want to impose here. It can be incidental for five, or it can be bigger. Twisting or grabbing the face mask is 15 yards. Incidental grabbing of the face mask is only five yards. Oh, he's got it. Oh, he pulled him over. That's dangerous. 15 yards. Yes. Good call. Face mask. Defense. First down. Ball is out near the 25. Well, the Aggies have uh, not been able to re respond to 13 unanswered points. Let's see what they can do. 17 unanswered points. This is Vic. Gets outside. And he has finally tumbled out of bounds up around the 30. So that's a little more than a five-yard pickup for him. Jerry Gray finally got him. The Texas defense plays awfully well when they are ahead more than seven points. They're just going to try to rush the passer with those uh, four front people and uh, jump right on those receivers. From the 30, it's about second and a four and a half, call it. That's handed off to Bernstein, and he gets a yard out to the 31, where Ray Woodard brings it down. He's 6'6", 270, playing defensive tackle. As we look at Jack Sherrill, who is in second year at the Aggies, coming from Pittsburgh, where he had an outstanding career. The first thing he did was go out and win the Aggie alumni over, and he's done a great job. There's Freddie. Third down, four from the 31. Murray back, has a little time, gets his pass off, and it's incomplete. He drills Siler with a hard shot, and which couldn't hold it as Craig Curry was all over him, and once again, the Aggies are unable to move into the wind. And uh, on the field comes Stewart. And once again, Texas, with seven minutes and 35 seconds to play in this quarter, is going to have the win to work with. Even in the first quarter, it looked like the Aggies were going to tear the Texas defense up, and Texas is leading the nation. But the experience, they know how, their confidence has prevailed. A little better kick, but again, watch that win. He just knocks it straight down like a pitching wedge. Now the ball rolls downfield a little bit for the Aggies, and... Texas will have it around the 34. That wound up 36 yards. And uh, for the first time in a long time, Texas is going to have to start on their own side of the field. And at the line of scrimmage and a penalty flag. Ronnie Robinson carrying the ball. Keith Guthrie has been quiet here in this for quite some time now. It's a holding call against Texas, and I just kind of wonder if maybe they're not grabbing a handle on Guthrie, the nose guard for the Aggies. Well, that Guthrie is charging in and making a good, good, aggressive uh, charge into the... Now you see number 56 uh, <laughs> grabbing hold of the jersey with his left hand. That's... Now... You can, see, you can see Guthrie get up and look back at... Uh, Blocker, David Jones. David Jones, the backup center. So they take the penalty, move them back to the 24. Texas averaging 16 penalties a game coming in. The Aggies averaging 17 penalties. Been relatively quiet based on those uh, previous numbers. We've had a total of seven so far today. 
So it's first down and 20. McIver, play action. Gets his pass away and should have been intercepted, but is not. Number 21, Billy Brown, had it right in his face. Couldn't pull it down. He's mad at himself because McIver did throw the ball too far. Brown's going to come right in front of the receiver. Perfect ball reaction. He breaks up. Watch him move all the way in front of the receiver. Has plenty of time to gather himself and intercept it, but it goes right through his hands. Incomplete. Second down, 20 for the Longhorn. Hand it off. Robinson. And Robinson runs it up to the 34. No, nope, make it the 29. I think we should point out that Texas has scored in the last five possessions previous to this. Really taking over control of the ball game. Let's they get it that. up around midfield. I think the short of that first down, they might load it up and stop. Try another field goal. 60 odd yard field goal. Record is six to seven yards. Six ten to play in this quarter. Then the ball off to Robinson. He gets loose, gets a great block, gets a first down, and hits the chalk at the Aggie 42. Texas blocked it very well. The Aggies played it very poorly on defense. One thing wide receivers have to do is block. Uh, when they play for Texas, they catch the ball, but at times they have to block. Robinson gets free, and now he's going to break out and pick up his blocking right there. You see a tremendous block. Uh, I believe that was Duhan. I'm not sure. But uh, Robinson goes on and makes the uh, first down. Let's watch Duhan. Number seven. Watch. He gets position, and then he makes what we call a shoulder roll block and gets into the legs of the defensive back. And he goes right to the ground, allowing Robinson to break for the first down. Slayton's had a rough day. Nothing there this time for Terry Orr, the fullback, from the 41 of Texas A&M. Texas with second down and 20, ran twice and made the first down. Caught the Aggies playing man for man in the secondary and trying to blitz, and it didn't work. Or out and in at fullback now is Irvin Davis. He's a 230 pounder. So they take out 225 and put in 230. It's second down and 10. Texas AM 41. 31 13. Texas blowing it open in the third quarter. They run the reverse with Billboard Bryant throwing a pass, and Duhon is wide open. Touchdown. Designed it in a battle with a reverse fate. Robinson's going to hand the ball back to Billy Bob Bryant. It's going to be a 41 yard touchdown pass. Duhon goes into the safety, acts like he's going to block. He comes back, and it's a beautiful throw. Bryant hit him right on the numbers for the touchdown. Ashbury couldn't cover it. Let's go back and see what Duhon does. He looks back. That's the key that he tries to fool the secondary. And Ash, fair number 16, is just a freshman, and he gets fooled on the play. Kick by Ward is good. Five minutes and 12 seconds to play in the third quarter. And the Longhorns have blown it wide open. As they jump out to the 38-13 lead. Texas. Frank, I got to just say this. The Georgia Bulldogs are in for a long afternoon, January 2nd. I can agree with you. Texas, Freddie Akers has got some great football players. This is how other coaches praise. You take the defense. Uh, Jackie Sherrill told me that all 22 of the defensive players will someday be playing pro ball. It's just when their class graduates. That is praise indeed for that defensive team. And I'll go back. Freddie has done a tremendous job of recruiting. Tremendous job. They've won the recruiting battles in Texas. The 1,100 schools that play football in high schools that play football in Texas. And Freddie has gotten more than his share. He's done a great job. The kickoff is high. The wind's got it and takes it on up. And a 5-12 to play in the third quarter. The Aggies get it one more time, and they haven't done anything going from left to right in this quarter. 
Keith, I was just looking up and to see the Texas has scored 24 points in 10 minutes of this sec of this third quarter. Those were the numbers of the last touchdown. We've got uh, 51 points on the scoreboard and uh, 48 of those 51 <laughs> with the win. The pass is incomplete. Murray from the 20 going to the air trying to hit Woodside and Craig Curry was right with him. Of course the third quarter all season as you can see there has belonged to Texas. You know, I was trying to figure out more in my mind when I saw that statistic is why, why does Texas do so well in the third quarter? I think it's because of their defense. Their defense gets better. They get familiar with the other team's offense, and they give that offensive unit a lot of opportunities, and that's what's happened today. That kind of takes care of the fourth quarter, doesn't it? Yes, they don't have to worry about the fourth quarter. <laughs> Substitutes are in the ballgame. George Smith and Rod Bernstein are the setbacks. And Murray's going to put it up on second and ten. Now he breaks out of the pack. And gets it up to the 26. They'll be four yards short of the first down. Tony Edwards brought him down, a middle linebacker, junior out of St. Louis, for the Longhorn. I was trying to figure out how many tackles the middle linebacker has made for Texas this fall, with Edwards alternating with lighting. Edwards being the starter last year, part of the season, 152 tackles by the middle linebacker. That might be a record, Keith. They're outstanding players. Third down and about three and a half for AM to keep it. Second and third quarter, they've done very little into the win. Third quarter, and almost nothing, and they're not going to do anything here. Smith carried it. 225 pound sophomore, and just nothing there. Well, the Aggies made one little drive in the second quarter going into the win and got a field goal out of it, but that is the only possession that uh, has been a first down made. Texas made no first downs going into the win, and the Aggies have made none this quarter. Texas, though, is going to be in a Sikkim defense in the fourth quarter as oh. AM tries to come back from a big, big deficit now, 38 13. Stewart's got to get it out of there. He gets it low and spins it upfield, and the fair catch is called by Kelvin Elk up at the 41. <laughs> For the Longhorns, even Bevo's. Can you tell the smile? Happier. Do you think he's got the <laughs> smile? I believe he is. It looks like it. Twinkle in his eye. John Walker and Irvin Davis now lined up, and it's Walker with a football trying to come to the outside with it. He can't do it. Number 39 reaching in. Daryl Smith brings him down. I think we should mention and pay tribute to Rick McIver, the quarterback who's come off the bench and has a red hot hand and has inspired this Texas team to great heights. When you go back, he played 1969. 1979, 1980, was a starter in 81, was benched, injured last year, so this is his fifth year and only taken 12 snaps before this ball game. He's back to throw on second down, 11, going deep with it. Epps is down there. He's got a touchdown. They're just tearing the Texas A&M secondary apart. The play, 60 yards. And McIver threw that ball at least 65 to 70 yards in the air. He had completed three passes before this ball game in 12 attempts. Came off the bench when Texas looked like they were going nowhere. And he is red hot. Well, he's going out in style, isn't it? It really is. I would say that Freddie Akers will have to give serious consideration to start him in the Cotton Bowl. Jeff Ward for the extra point out of Morshell's hole. Once again, Rob has to reach for it and gets it down, and the point is good. And at 3.02 to play in the third quarter. Holy mackerel, the Longhorn wagon is really rolling. Murray has just suffered his fifth sack of the ball game. It sits now back on the four of Texas A&M. And he throws quickly. Pass is completed to Jimmy Williams, and Williams gets up around the 11. That is short of the first down. They've got to go. Jimmy They've got to go to the 16 to get their first down. Uh, as far as a turnaround in a football game, and I know a, a fellow who's probably just been waiting to hear me say this, but the only other game that I can think of where the turnaround has been this dramatic and this decisive would have been that 55-24 USC-Notre Dame game. 
You know Eric Parsigan would wince if you heard yeah. him use that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the day Eric learned to hate the white horse. Pass thrown to Rich Seiler, and it is completed just far enough for the first down for a and Jerry Gray on the tackle. If my memory's right, the Irish came back and laid it on 53 to nothing. It's 51, 51 to nothing, uh, something like that, and a little bit later. That's Seiler making the first down reception. He's the leading receiver, but he's been very quiet today. Curry's been covering him, and uh, for most of the time, doing a good job. Look at the score by quarters again. 31 points in that third quarter. Murray chased out of the pocket. And Kevin dives up the hill and gets a first down. Well, it's all academic, but I still want to say again how great the Texas defense has been all year long. They're forefront people pressure in the passer that's the mark of a great defensive team Keith you cannot have a great defense unless you can pressure the passer with your down lineman in Texas I think is the best in the country doing this first down for the Aggies it's academic with four minutes to play Texas has won the ball game in their 90th meeting they have dominated the series and Murray gives the ball off to George Smith and not much there as he tries to run a little draw with it Murray back. Throws it down the middle. Under pressure. Penalty flag is thrown. Ty Allert hit Murray just as he let the ball go. And uh, Murray getting up very slowly now. Feeling of all the appendages to make sure they're still in place. And Percy Penn calls the penalty. Personal foul. Roughing the passer against Texas. Ty Allert, the linebacker. His father is a very good friend of mine. A high school coach in Texas. For many, many years, still in school administration, was probably the most sought-after defensive football player in this state two years ago, just a sophomore. Will be a great one next year. Watch Alec fire from the top of your screen, coming right through around, untouched, and he just collisions Murray after the ball was thrown. So it's a first down on a 15-yard mark off out just past the 43. I'll tell you, Kevin Murray, who was so impressive in the early going, has uh, absorbed a considerable lesson now this afternoon himself. That's, that's a big point, Keith. You, it, you hate to go through it, but all quarterbacks have to, have to from time to time. That pass uh, is going to be a, a good catch to Don Jones, a senior out of Nacogdoches, Texas. He kind of bobbled it around a little bit, but he pulled it down, and they're just short of midfield with it. As the clock continues to roll along, coming up on three minutes to play in the game. 45-13, Texas. That one is short. He had his man all right, but he was late getting it to Jeff Nelson, and he bounced it in front of him. The most valuable players for Chevrolet today, Rick McIver, quarterback for Texas, 8 out of 12, 170 yards, four touchdowns. For Texas A&M, that big defensive uh, tackle, uh, Ray Childress, and he had quite a day. He had nine tackles in the ball game and was a defensive force, literally forcing Texas to play away from him much of the ball game until they got things in hand. So Chevrolet will send to each of the universities $1,000 for the General Academic Scholarship Fund and the names of those players. Here's Siler, the tight end, making a catch, struggling down on the 40. Somebody knocked the ball loose finally, but they're going to rule him stop. And the Aggies will keep the ball at around the Texas 40 41. You know, we have to give a great deal of credit to Freddie Akers for getting this Texas team and uh, number two ranked in the country. Freddie has done a great job in Texas. Murray's pass is away and uh, incomplete, intended for Jeff Nelson. And Murray is running for his life. His pocket discipline right. has uh, not been effective now because he has to move around and get away from the Texas rush. David McWilliams is a defensive coordinator for University of Texas. Played for Darrell, was a great center for him, and uh, have to give him a lot of credit for putting together this defensive unit. 
I think they're going to get through just before the rain comes. There's a pass on the money. Goes good to Nelson. Nelson shakes a tackler and fumbles the ball out of bounds. The Aggies will keep it, and it's inside the Texas 20. So they're playing contained now, and they're not going to care a whole lot, I'm sure, if uh, the Aggies do go on down and get a touchdown out of it. Well, they, they want to keep their scoring uh, lead in the nation. I think they're number one against scoring, and uh, I'm sure they've got some problem with that, but uh, Nelson makes a great play and uh, gets the ball and gets extra yardage. Murray's pass thrown short again complete to Nelson, so all of a sudden it's Murray and Nelson hooking up. And that gain is inside the 15 down to the 13 with two and a half minutes to play in the ball game. Next Saturday, Auburn and Alabama from Birmingham's Legion Field. Ooh, they will be shouting about oh, that. Boy. Credential College School Board coming up with Jim Lampley and Bino Cook. Jack Whitaker spending the weekend down here with us. Pass is incomplete. Should have been caught right on the hands of Jimmy Hawkins. But Jimmy trying to turn up field maybe a little soon. And it bounces away. And uh, as Fred doing a little coaching in the late going with a lot of reserves on the field. He's fussing at him a little bit. Come on, rush the pass. Rush the pass. <laughs> Texas is very effective at doing that. There's Jack. He's been a very disappointing day, but you see his team has improved this year, and I think he feels that he's going to be very good next year. Murray running for his life. Throws it as far as he can into the out of bounds. Incomplete. Well, that's good coaching. On, he told them what to do, and, and they did it. Did a great job of it. Uh, of course, the, the feeling that those linemen have when they don't have to worry about the run. Here I come. Watch out. We've witnessed just a great effort by the Texas team, Keith. I, uh, they haven't scored that many points this year. Average 23 per game. Today, they've got 45. Nearly double their efforts. 10 ball games. On fourth down, Murray's pass bounces off the hands of a Texas defender, Marcy Cade, and then off the chest of Jeff Nelson. And the Longhorns stop him. I think that whole Texas bench is going to get to play today. Danny Akers, the coach's son now, is in the lineup at quarterback. They've used nine running backs so far today. There'll be no effort at all at trying to run up anything. I'll guarantee you Freddie Akers got all the points he needs and wants. And uh, his basic philosophy is you win the ball game and there's no sense in making them mad. Good point. I agree <laughs> with him. I agree with him. Many times I've come home to roost for you try to right. run it up a little bit. Red Duhon had a great day for Texas today. The Texas Longhorns with 25 seconds to play in the football game, leading by 32 points, 45-13, to win the Southwest Conference title outright. Uh, the Fighting Illini of Illinois won the Big Ten. UCLA gets into the Rose Bowl out of the Pac-10. That's probably the biggest surprise that we've had this season. UCLA getting off to a dreadful start and coming back to win their way into the Rose Bowl. Auburn is not a surprise in the SEC. The Texas Longhorns. The champions of the Southwest, beating Texas A&M 45-13.